Hey, Antonetta. Uh, how you doing? Hi. How are you doing, Thomas? Yeah, pretty good. Uh, you're based in New York, is that right? That's correct, yeah. How's, how's life in New York? Well, uh, I've been back and forth a lot uh, in the last two or three years. So, um, yeah, you know how New York is. Uh, unpredictable. <laughs> it's always good. I like that. I've spent a lot of time during COVID in Croatia. I mean, editing movie and going to production. Then I moved to Mexico a little bit, scouting for the next one. And, yeah, it's been... Um, it's been an interesting time, difficult and interesting times. And of course, we're here to talk about uh, Marina. You know, congrats uh, on the, the movie. Uh, you know, first and foremost, um, what was your initial reaction when you found out it was going to be the, the closing film uh, for this year's Glasgow Film Festival? I was so happy and very sad that I couldn't come in the same time. Uh, my actress is going to attend it. Um, uh, yes. You know, I have a story about Glasgow. I, I went to Glasgow uh, for a student exchange when I was 14. Um, and it was one summer. And that's when I fell in love for the first time with a guy from Portugal. He was also a student exchange. And he was 14 and we kissed. And uh, he jumped in this castle from his room to the kitchen. It was like from Harry Potter, you know? Oh. Uh, it was very fun. I love Glasgow. I'm so sad I cannot be there. Oh, it's amazing here. It's got a kind of special place in your heart in that case. Definitely. And then maybe next year or a year after, if, if we are all still here, I'll be there. Um, after winning, you know, the Golden Camera Award uh, at Cannes, uh, what does that sort of recognition uh, mean to you? Uh, is it a case that you're you know, happy to get the award, but you're even happier that the movie's getting, you know, that level of exposure? Uh, for the movie, that's very important. The movies are made for the audience to watch them, to live them, to, you know, um, walk through their emotional twists and turns. Uh, so th this was very important for me, that the movie, because of Camera Door, got such a distribution all over the world and classical distribution, which is also, I think, important for audience to create relationship with a film. And um, in Morina played at over 65 festivals since July, which is very, very good and won 23 awards. That means that audience responds very well to it. Um, and uh, that, that, is, that is the most important, to build that relationship with your audience. Uh, as for festival, what it brings to me, I, I have to be honest with you, I have never felt any of the glitter and shine of Morena because I've never gone to any festivals. For me, it was really over Instagram, watching these accounts as if it's someone else's life. Yeah. <laughs> I mostly did all these interviews from this room. And um, yeah, I hope that when things um, shift and change a little bit, I'm gonna have more opportunity to, um, maybe not with this film, but with another one, to, to be present with these people in the screening rooms. Yeah, you'd be uh, dying to get a chance to experience the, the guts and glam of, uh, of Glasgow again, or you know, uh, any other festivals that are you know, happening. No, I haven't had a chance to feel that. Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah. No, no, I haven't. In Cannes, I was in Cannes, but I was nine months pregnant. So I delivered my son 12 hours before I received camera door. So I really was not even at the closing ceremony, you know? And then I was, uh, you know, four months breastfeeding. And I went to Sarajevo with my son. He was 20 days old. It was difficult, it was difficult. Now it's different, I think I can travel more, but also, you know, being in US and traveling to European festivals is very different because being in Europe, you can just fly two days there, three days there and you're back home. But here it's like, you know, 16 hour flights. Just think uh, your son could have had his film, first film festival at Cannes, you know, if you took him to the <laughs> end ceremony. Kinda, that would have been I a great story. Say, I, 
uh, Cannes has granted him lifetime accreditation nice. because he was born basically on the day when I won Camera Door, almost. There should be a, a can, uh, you know, crash, you know, for, for kids. That might be a, an idea. Uh, there is a can baby club. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Um, you mentioned, obviously, you know, traveling back and forth between, you know, New York and, you know, your home country of, uh, you know, Croatia. Um, the film itself is stunning. You know, how much easier does it make it for you as a director to have that sort of setting, you know, uh, like Croatia and the... It's natural, natural beauty. It's interesting. Um, it, it's interesting. People, of course, perceive Croatia as a natural beauty because most of them don't live on the seaside. And, it, you know, it's not an easy life. It's dreadful. It's hard. It's uh, humid. It's uh, hot. Uh, in the winter, it's too cold. In the summer, it's too hot. There's no shade. Uh, it, it, it's difficult to wake up at four and to fish. And, <laughs> People who live at the sea, they don't go to swim, you know, and, and they don't eat fish. They want to eat meat. Uh, and uh, I, I was trying really hard to avoid its beauty and not present it as a postcard. And that was both a lens and my intention. She would say, c'est pas la jolie campagne. You know, it's not a nice, cute countryside. Uh, and we were focused on bringing this, you know, simmering tensions and desires and anger and impulses that were lying underneath the skin and um, focus on that and that leads the story instead of the scenery the scenery supports that because being at a place with no shade it's like burning it, it's it's a hell it's actually hell those islands are for me um who comes from this area are, are, are where i don't want to be <laughs> There's some great, uh, really some great diving scenes um, in, in the movie. Uh, what was your experience, you know, trying to shoot those and how, how challenging was it, you know, to get I those right? Underwater, that's my, my favourite thing, you know. Um, first of all, because not many people know what to do underwater. So uh, you can tell them anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking, but... Of course, I went to shoot at all my favorite diving spots um, where I went as a child. Um, and uh, it, it takes a very interesting uh, preparation to shoot underwater because exactly it's the same as above the water, right? You have actors and then you have camera crew and then you have assistants and then you also have divers. that are taking care of the safety of the people who are focusing on other things than their own safety underwater. So it's a complex thing and um, um, there's same as there's above water weather, you know, there's also underwater fog that is between mixtures of the currents of hot and cold water and all these kinds of things you would never think about, uh, like underwater wind. <laughs> but um, it's really uh, great because it's another state like shooting in the universe i guess yeah and it definitely uh, adds a different element to it uh, for sure yeah everything needs to be decided before uh how to go about it both so everybody needs to be clear it's you really need to be very well oiled machine to execute the scenes underwater where you're not watching only an actor underwater but uh entire uh, mise-en-scene emotional turn that that is more difficult and the most fun to do i love it i go with go you know like you are in the water while you're directing a few years ago you you know, directed your short um into the blue you know and you can see the the parallels between this and, and marina um did you know at that point when you were making into the blue that that idea you want to you know you wanted to go back and uh, explore and, and of course you know make it into your feature debut no, I didn't. I, I just started working with Grazia uh, Filipovic, my uh, non-actress, actress in Morena. She was, yeah, uh, 12 at the time. And uh, it was really very great to work with her. It was an amazing experience. And I wanted to write a feature film for her. So just after we had premiere in Berlin, um, 
I started writing more in a, a, having her in mind and really adjusting this script to what the best that she could bring to screen from herself. Yeah, I think it definitely shows. And also she was nominated for that award at uh, you know, Berlin yes. uh, Film Festival. Um, one thing you know, that obviously comes across, it's the, the kind of central point is the, you know, the family dynamic, um, you know, that toxicity, uh, I suppose, is maybe the you know, kind of polite way of putting it. Uh, how tricky was it for you to get that dynamic and that balance uh, in those relationships? Uh, you mean with actors working? Yeah, yeah, yeah just, yeah. A little bit like family constellation, you know, I brought them all to an island uh, in a house and they lived there for a couple of weeks together, I think four. And uh, I would wake Leon up at 4 a.m. and I would tell him to wake everybody up in the role of aunt and we would go fishing and they cooked together. They were in the character for six, seven hours at a time. I, I would tweak when they go out of the character, like, you know, as if I was more fly in the wall. But uh, we were creating the world that it's outside the screen. We were basically working on all the possible dynamics and scenes that I didn't write. So that once we come on set, these scenes were second nature and we didn't have to rehearse them and, you know, take the energy and juice out of what had to be recorded on screen. Yeah, I think some of those exchanges uh, we see the, uh, you know, the characters go through are pretty, pretty intense and pretty brutal uh, in parts. It was great because they were such a character, different type of actors. You know, Gratis was a child and a non-actress and Leon likes to tackle the role, you know, like almost as a stray dog come in and um Danica from this more uh, you know um Danish theater and cinema with a different thing she came and 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 Cliff came from Hollywood and their films are really created in different dynamics so to marry those people together to be a family with a lot of history it, it was um it was challenging but somehow their backgrounds really like uh, somehow synchronicity feed into these roles and uh, strengthen it. Yeah, so uh, a big part, uh, a big idea in the film is how Julia is discouraged, you know, from aiming big, from aiming, you know, to go to Harvard and dreaming big. Yeah. You being in the, the creative industry, uh, you know, being a director, was it quite easy for you to relate to that idea? Yes, we are often told that, you know, I, I can totally relate to it because in, in Croatia, I didn't study directing, right? Because that was not, I didn't know any female director in Croatia when I went to school. Um, it's hard to tackle the problem when you are in it and part of it you know, and that is so insightful about Julia's character because she has a wisdom that she would not really maybe in reality have entirely because she has it from the faith. Um, I was in Croatia and um, I, I really felt something very specific. I felt that they're gonna cut my legs off before I arrive anywhere. And I needed to leave, you know, I needed to leave and um, U.S. has its own dynamics and different ways uh, in this business, but it also, for me, somehow was an easier place to find my calling and honor it and, and do what I'm doing right now that I don't think I could have ever done in Croatia, to be honest. Uh, just, you know, one final question um, before you go. Um, what is it that you're, you know, working on at the moment? You mentioned that you're doing some scouting uh, in Mexico uh, for a project? I'm, 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 I'm doing a project about um, a mother and daughter relationship. They're, um, it's not quite like Morena, they're much older, but um, I like to say like, you know, elevator pitch, it's um, beautiful colors and dark sensuality. I can leave you with that. <laughs> That sounds uh, intriguing. Uh, well, Antony, you know, thanks so much uh, for your time and you know, best of luck uh, with the movie's release. Thank you. Th Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Yeah.